Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with the, another powerful point to ponder as we close out this wonderful week of examining what to remember when you don't like yourself. And yesterday, and I hope you'll get watch the video again, we talked about some of the signs that you are having a problem liking yourself. These are signs, whether you wanna recognize it or not, admit it or not, brother, if you've got these signs going on, you got, you got a problem, okay? Now, what we want to look at today is what the Word of God says about how to repair the issues of not liking yourself. Um, the, the, um, the, the complexes, the inferiority complexes that we have. And I defined what inferiority complex is one of several days ago. And that is um, repressed ideas that we have about ourselves rooted in something that in the past, what somebody said in the past, what we've been told about ourselves in the past, that affects us in our present. And they are repressed in the sense that we don't want to deal with it. But they keep influencing us, the, the, the voices from the past that we don't want to deal with are still affecting us today. They are repressed. Now we're going to look at what the Bible says we have got to do to fix it. And I hope that you'll take this, pass this link on to somebody, or if you're in a small group with somebody, you'll look at Psalm 139, which we're going to look at. And I'm going to give you seven quick things. Then I'm going to give you something. I want you to write it down. It doesn't take long to write them down. You write them down and then attach the following verses to what you write down. All right. So here is what the Bible says is essential for self-worth. In fact, you can write these down, take Psalm 139 and say, OK, I've got to work on these seven things. And here they are. Number one, recognize that God knows all about you. That's number one. Write that down. It's critical. God knows all about you. And I say that because we go back to the story of the swan that was called an ugly duckling. They were calling the ugly duckling an ugly duckling. They didn't know what it was. It was not an ugly duckling. It was a swan. And there's a lot of people who tell you what you can't do, what you can't be, what you can't have. They don't know. Only God knows. You don't even know. You think you're the ugly duckling and you got swan DNA. So here's what you have to remember. Recognize that God knows all about you. This is what Psalm 139, let's read verses one through six and see if it does not say that God, only God knows what all about you. It says, oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. So it says, you know everything about me. No one knows everything about me, but you, Lord, you know, when I sit down or stand up, you know, my thoughts, even when I'm far away, you see me when I travel, when I rest at home, you know, everything I do, you know what I'm going to say, even before I say it, Lord, you go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessings on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I don't even know myself. So you don't, only God does. So therefore, if only God knows who you are, then you get your self-assessment, amen, from God. Number two, you write it down. The first point was recognize God knows all about you. And we see that truth found in Psalm 139, verses one through six, especially when it says, uh, verse one says, oh, Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. There's nobody else that can say that about you but God alone. And the church said, amen. Here's the second thing you have to remember in order to have self-worth. These are the basic requirements for self-worth. Number two, you have to remember that God is always with you. If God is always with you. Look at verses 7 through 12 and see, does that not teach us in verses 7 through 12 that God is always with us? Verse 7 says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If God is with you, what God's with you. If I go to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. That word grave, uh, the King James says, if I make my bed in hell. If I make my bed, in other words, if I mess up my life and I end up on the streets, that God is still with me. And if God is with you, listen to me. Do you worry about lunch money if uh, your, your, your father's name is Jeff Bezos? No. Why? Because you know Jeff Bezos has it. 
Amen. Do you worry about a blown out tire if your father's name is Fire, Harvey Firestone? No, because you know Firestone has, amen, tires. Do you worry about a computer if your daddy's name is Bill Gates? No. So you don't worry about anything if God is with you. And the key to self-worth is knowing that I don't accept other people's opinion about me that is in conflict with God. Only God knows about me. Two, God is always with me. Amen. Three, put this down. Number three, God created you. God is the one that created you. Look at verse 13 and 14 and see if that's not the theme. Verse 13 says this. You made all the delicate things inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well, how well I know it. You watch me as I was being formed in the utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God? They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. What he is saying here is that you created me. They called me the ugly duck. And I, look, you know what I am. You know that I am the swan. And the requirements for self-worth is to know that only God knows about you, no one else. So don't, don't subscribe to their opinion. Remember, God is always with you. Three, and remember that God is the one that created you. Four, put this down, recognize that God has uniquely designed you. God has called you to be uniquely you. Amen. Look at verses 15, uh, uh, verses 15 and through 16. Notice what it says. You watch me as I was being formed in my utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Notice, he's saying before God had I came out of my mother's womb. God already designed who I was supposed to be. That's what he's saying. And God designed you to be different from other people. The reason you don't act like a duck is because you're not a duck. You're not an ugly duckling. You're a swan. Amen. And amen. Recognizing that God has uniquely designed you. Don't let anybody try to make you something that you're not. Find out how God has gifted you and live in your your gift mix, all right? Here's the fifth thing, and that is, know that God has loving thoughts towards you. In other words, if you don't have anybody in your fan club, the God of the universe is in your fan club. God is appalling you, yay! Look at verse 17, see if 17 doesn't teach me that God is applauding me, that God's in my corner. God, God, God is with me. God is my, how do I say it? God's my advocate. God's my advocate. Verse 17 says, how precious are your thoughts about me? But I'm unemployed. How precious are your thoughts about me? How precious are your, God has precious thoughts about you. And if other people don't have precious thoughts about you, God has precious thoughts about you. And it's important for you to receive God's loving thoughts towards you. Amen. Number six, this is very important. Renounce what your enemies are saying, past and present, about your self-worth. In other words, you got to get to the point like you're, you're like Malcolm X and you say, I don't care what you think about you. I renounce what you say about me. You get angry if you have to get angry, but by all means reject, totally denounce what the enemy is saying about you. Look at verses 19 through 22 and see if that's not what the theme is. Oh God, if you would destroy the wicked, get uh, get out of my life, you murderers. Get out of my life or get out of my head. And they're murdering your dreams. They're murdering your potentials. And he's saying, get out of my life. 
And they may be out of your life, but they're not out of your head. You're letting people uh, occupy space in your head with rent free. And you got to ask God to help me get them out of my head in the name of Jesus. Get them out of my head. Renounce with the enemies of your self-worth. If their enemies in the past or in the present are saying about you. And then finally, here's the seventh thing. And you find that in verses 23 and 24. And that's receive God's changes for you. Once you have gotten those, what the enemy said out of your head, and once you believe in God's loving thoughts about you and how God has uniquely designed you, then God says, okay, it's now time to move forward. Let's move forward, make some changes. Let's improve who you are. Verse 23, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of every everlasting life. In other words, Lord, anything about me that ain't right, that offends you, get rid of it. And then Lord, let me follow you in an everlasting, in a path of everlasting life, in a greater quality of life. So God, once God gets the mess out of you, God says, okay, now I want to put my truth in you and I want you to follow me. And these are the seven requirements for having self-worth. And I wanna ask you, how are you doing with these seven requirements? Let me give them to you again. Number one, recognize God knows all about you and only God knows about you. Remember that God is always with you. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Remember that God has created you. Recognize that you are uniquely designed. God, you're not the ugly duckling, you're the beautiful swan. Remember, God has loving thoughts towards you. God is in your corner. Six, don't let people get in your head. Amen. Reject it. Renounce what the enemies are saying about you. And then finally, God wants to make some changes in your life and move you in a new direction. Say, okay, God, whatever changes you see that needs to be made in me, do it. And I'm going to follow you. And those are the seven requirements self-worth. Which one of those seven do you have to work on? How are you doing? How would you grade yourself if 10 is the highest and one is the lowest? How would you grade yourself on these seven areas? I promise if you can, by the grace of God, practice it. It's about practicing. It's not just knowing it, but practicing and get to the 10, get to the highest level in all these areas, see what happens to your life. And that's your work. That's your homework. That's something, amen, that you have to do. You know, take this teaching that I've given to you by the grace of God, put it in a conspicuous place and go over it again. Maybe get yourself in a small group. That's why it's important to be a part of a Sunday school class or a local church so you can have accountability partners. And I think that maybe in 2022, you might want to take these seven principles and amen every month or every, every week. Go over these seven principles with somebody else until you master them, until you really get them in your spirit. All right. Thank you for joining me this week. And I want to pray with you right now. Lord, our God, thank you for this journey we've been on, on what to remember when we don't like ourselves. We thought we were the ugly duckling, but you knew all along we were the beautiful swan. We've been looking in distorted mirrors. Uh, but now, Lord, we're looking at ourselves through your lens. Help us, O oh Lord, to move beyond uh, the, the opinions of other people and help us to only embrace what your Bible, which is our blue book, says about us. Keep us, O oh Lord. Thank you for opportunities to get ourselves together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look, thank you so much for being with me with another powerful point to ponder. If you don't have a church on, please contact us here. New start sclive.org. Love to have you become a part of St. Stephen Church, okay? Love to, love to be your brother and, and your pastor, but more importantly, your brother and your friend, Brother Kevin. So you contact us here and we will get back with you. Tomorrow's the Lord's Day. Uh, it's, of course, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, the Labor Day weekend. And uh, I've got a special message I'm going to share about Ruth, who was in Boaz's field and were labored of the importance of laboring in the wrong field. If you work, sometimes we, we work hard. Probably is we're working in the wrong field. And we're going to talk about that 
uh, tomorrow. So you join us and share the link, invite someone else to join us in worship tomorrow. But until then, until then, it starts, by the way, at nine o'clock. Worship starts at nine o'clock with the pre-worship experience. So join us at nine o'clock and then we'll get really cranked up at 930. So be with us. All right. But until then, uh, don't forget that during COVID-19 and this Delta variant to stay safe, be conscious of that. Stay safe. Stay sane. Know that God is in control and do something that's very important for yourself and others. And that is get vaccinated. And we will see you tomorrow in worship. Peace and blessings. Love you much. Take care.